Hi, my name is Ebenezer Safford. I'm a business strategy consultant and a data specialist. Welcome to today's session. This is the first of the series of the Power BI training for the public. If you are joining my channel for the first time, I welcome you to the new year. As part of my objectives for the year, I wish to train 500 data analysts or specialists in or scientists in Ghana especially. By the end of the year I hope to train 500 people. So this is the first of the series. In January we're doing Power BI. February we'll do Python. I'll have a guest tutor in the person of Eugene Foley. Um, there will be subsequent schedules that I would let you know in the course of the year but mainly these two courses. Um, in the coming week, I would also interview some people who are in the practice to actually get a fair idea of what they do and how we can also learn from them. I have an interview with one um, Bavuk, who is a Google Cloud tutor. He's an official Google Cloud tutor who teaches machine learning and data engineering. That one too will be uploaded um, in the coming weeks. So welcome to the Power BI training. So this is the first of five in the series for the Power BI training. So welcome. So what are we going to go through? First, let's put in some baselines. Um, there's this quote that I learned in one of my courses last year and it is impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows so let's try and keep an open mind you may know some of the techniques some of the tools that we are going to teach but the reason why you are here is to learn so let's have an open mind and learn what we can pick from each other if there are any questions you can post them maybe in subsequent um, tutorials or subsequent videos I would answer them so my name is Ebenezer Safwadu. I'm a lover of Christ and data science. I love to learn and teach. I love to impact lives wherever I go. I love transforming business. My background mainly is electrical engineering and business management. Um, I'm uh, currently the manager strategy of a company that returns, that has a turnover of about a billion dollars. Um, for security reasons, I may not be able to mention the name of the company. So that's how I fell in love with data science, working in strategy. We needed data to make decisions. So that is about me. Um, class rules and objectives. Um, try as much as possible to finish the five videos when they are uploaded. And when you start, please try and finish. Because don't the reason why you are here is to learn. So just make time. Uh, maximum an hour will be done, and depending on the length of the video, just stay in till the end, and you will definitely learn a thing or two for life. And second rule is make it a habit to always practice what is taught here. So I'll be giving out the files that we'll be working with so as you can also have a hands-on feel. So make sure that you actually practice yourself. And practice makes perfect. Data science, that is what it is. You would learn something and if you don't use it, you are likely to forget. So practice, practice, practice. So let's get to some of the um, essence of what we're doing. The key aspect that I keep always telling people is the end result is that we want to make decisions. So if we want to make decisions, how do we make decisions is the question. So we want to use the data to make decisions. Um, someone would ask how were decisions made in previous times? It's mainly based on experience and judgment. So most business organizations have always made decisions, but it had always been, okay, this person has been here for a long time, so he knows what to do. The CEO knows what to do based on his experience. But now what the whole world everybody is moving into is a scientific way of making decisions. Like, it's more of building a case for the decision that has been made. So if we are going to invest in a particular area, 
even though by experience we know we need some data to actually tell us and point us to whether we are making the right decision or not so this all is about getting data and transforming it to information processing it then we get the knowledge to make decisions and take actions and when an action is taken for instance if a business is making a sale of twenty thousand dollars or cities and they decide that based on the data they realize that maybe a particular product is moving quick more than others and they make the decision to buy more product once that action is taken there will be more data generated because the product that has been bought will generate more data and then the decision would have to go through an iteration again with the data set so once an action is taken more data is generated and therefore the cycle begins again we need to begin to analyze to know what decision to make okay so the question I've been asked often is that what do I need to be successful as a data scientist I think I forgot to bring an air one key thing that I would always say is that a willing heart to learn because data science is not or data analysis is not static it's dependent on the problems that you meet so the more problems you meet the more you learn and the more you become better it is more of practice practice and practice so without practice you cannot become a better data analyst or a data scientist so the best skill that you can have as a data analyst or somebody who wants to be a data analyst I will learn how to learn I learn every day even with particular um, tools that I've used before or even problems that I've solved before and one other thing we should know is that data science or data analysis is about problem solving so in problem solving today you have met this problem tomorrow you meet another problem a data analyst can be working in let's say um, an IT firm today tomorrow he'll be analyzing data from healthcare the following day he'll be analyzing data from maybe energy sector the other day he'll be analyzing data from pharmaceuticals so without that willing heart to learn you will not survive in the field of a data analyst or a data scientist most importantly things are rapidly changing well, the Power BI that we are going to learn today is a product by Microsoft. You realize that since its introduction some five, six years ago, almost every two months it's been updated. Currently, it's even updated every month. On 15th of January, the January update would come. So without that willingness to learn, you cannot say, I learned it five, I started using Power BI in 2016. And what I knew then, some of the models that I built then and what I built today are interesting. I don't even go to my old files anymore because the whole tool has changed and things that we used to do manually has been automated in a certain way and it's easier. So you have to have that heart to learn to be successful in the industry that you've chosen. So I'll take you through some of the things you need to do before we go into the Power BI itself. But this is an introductory class. Um, before you actually even do any data analysis, you need to go through a certain methodology or sometimes called data pipeline. That is, so it's like um, data is at a certain place. So let me probably help by drawing. So data may start from here and the goal is information. So between the data and information now, even we prefer to call it insights because the insights that brings illumination to the decision maker to make a decision. So between the insights and the data is this pipeline. So you, the data goes through this pipeline before it comes out as information or insight. I need to understand these processes. There are various processes or documented uh, methodologies that people use in data analysis or data science. One is the KDD. I'll not go too much into it because 
it's more of obsolete today but the structure is the same so data goes through processing transformation you mine the data and you interpret and then you get the information another methodology which is common is the SEMA I also not go too much into SEMA because um, SEMA is just the um, acronym for sample, explore, modify, model, and assess. There's also another uh, tool called CRIPS DM, that's Cross Industry Standard Processing for Data Mining. I personally I use this a lot because of how useful it is. So I'll take you through this and then at last one which is the major one that data analysts or data scientists in today use. So the Chris DM methodology states that first you need business understanding. In data science like I said or data analysis you may be doing analysis cross from, from cross industries. So you can be analyzing data from pharmaceuticals, maybe it could be a retail data, it could be a wholesale data, and each and every industry has its own parameters. So for instance, imagine you're analyzing data from a financial sector, maybe a bank, and all of a sudden you are brought data from the healthcare to actually analyze. You are a data analyst, you are not, or a data scientist, you are not the expert in the field. However, as a data scientist begins with understanding the business. Without understanding the business, you cannot start. So we are going to use Power BI, but you realize that most of the examples I'm going to teach, you have to understand the business or the problem that we are trying to solve. In business understanding, what you are trying to do is asking the question, what problem are we trying to solve? Because the essence of what we are trying to do is to bring insight. So without knowing the problem we are trying to solve and understanding it, you cannot solve it. Most of the time, even the business users who are going to make the decision like this, you may not even know what the problem is. So your ability to pose the right question and understanding the business, you have to ask a lot of questions. I remember during the COVID times, I wanted to build a model for the COVID, know the uh, r not, and all. I had to call friends in the health sector to understand how the transmission rates, the meaning of A or the meaning of B or the meaning of C. So as I'll be able to appreciate what problem I want to solve. Then after understanding the business, we'll come back to this because when you are treating the Power BI, you realize that it's very, very important. Without the business understanding, you will be at a loss as a data analyst. That's why I said learning is the most important requisite uh, skill that is needed as a data analyst. The second is data understanding. You need to understand the data. Okay, are there missing data sets? Because in the real world, maybe with our demo data, you see that the data is perfect. But in the real world, data is never perfect. You can be in the Fortune 100 company, data is not perfect. can be in a startup, the data is still not perfect. So there is always data imperfection or data quality issues that would arise. I'm sure recently in Ghana during the election, we saw some of the issues that came around with the data. After understanding the data, understanding the fields, maybe looking at some exploratory analysis, just looking at the data and seeing, okay, there are missing fields. What do I need to do? How many columns? How many rows? In my company, I deal with like 3 million rows every month. Because they will have about 3 million customers. Then there is the data preparation after understanding. This is where more of the data work comes. So now you have to prepare the data because the data may have missing values. There may be issues with the data. You may have to combine or append or merge some data to be able to make meaning out of it. So from there, you prepare the data. We'll do a lot here. Mostly, the data analyst or data scientist will spend most of his time preparing the data. Maybe in our examples, because the data is quite fine-tuned, you may not spend too much time here. Then you model the data into the um, tool that you are using. Maybe you have to model um, a certain machine learning algorithm. Then you evaluate whether it is 
the precision and the accuracy then you deploy so in evaluation sometimes there will be a test if you are doing machine learning for instance there will be a test set and there will be a training set so when you train the machine learning algorithm we'll go probably into that later but mostly after modeling you evaluate whether it is good or not before you deploy um, into the field to test but it's an iterative approach if you look at it but you funny enough the center of it all is data we always have a terminology in data science that says data beats algorithm a poor data with a good data scientist is not too good a good data with not too good data scientists can do way better than a poor data because when the data is not accurate let's say the data does not reflect what is happening let's say sales is twenty thousand dollars and you have sales being recorded as eight thousand dollars there's no amount of iterations as a data scientist you can do to make the data to give the business a better insight somebody with the right sales amount would be able to do better than you so it's important that you always check the accuracy of the data you are working with otherwise always when you send it to the end user they'll be like oh this cannot be so data is at the center of it all and recently there's been a new um, methodology that has been developed called OSEMN and it's how our data scientists work. I prefer the CRISDM because it goes beyond just the data science part as in starting with the data because it looks at the business understanding. Understanding the business is one of the things that key things I always tell people. If you are going to analyze data in for instance a hospital you should know that precision is key. If you make a mistake you may be killing people so without an understanding you may be telling the people wrong things so that's why I love the Chris DM but OSCMN is what data science today is mostly about you first obtain the data you scrub the data the scrubbing the data is like transforming the data or the preparation of the data in the um, Chris DM then we have exploratory explore the data Sometimes you look at some patterns, some visuals to see whether there are some errors. Then you model the data and you then interpret the results for insights or information. So basically this is what we'll be doing. But most importantly, these two would also form a huge part of what we'll be doing. Business understanding and data understanding. I'll keep repeating this because anytime I'm teaching classes, I tell them that you realize that it is very, very important to understand the business, the technologies. Let's say you are doing um, some financial analysis, you should understand the ratios. Otherwise, you would not be able to model properly and you'll be giving insights that may not reflect what the company is doing. So that's why learning as a data scientist is a must. You would always be learning. Okay. So there's this quote by Riley Newman. He said, good data science is more about the questions you pose of the data rather than data managing and analysis. And this is very true. With the right questions, which comes back to the business understanding, whenever you get data, ask the right questions. What value would this data be to the business? I always tell people, ask the question, what decision do you want the end user to make? So you are analyzing a data set from maybe a hospital or you're analyzing a data set from a supermarket and you are doing it for the business owner. The question you ask yourself is, after my analysis, what decision do I want them to take? With such questions, you'll be able to do better analysis than just starting analysis, going to concepts. Questioning is one of the best ways of learning and learning is, the, is at the heart of data science. So it is true that good data science is more about the questions you pose. So mostly when you get the data, start asking questions, 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 till you are okay before you start working. Otherwise, you finish with your analysis and the end user will be like, what do you want us to We already know this. So you've not solved any problem. It's always about problem solving. So you need to ask the right question to get the objective. It's like a research work. You are like an investigator on one point and you are a magician at one point because you are predicting. So that is the two major works of a data scientist, a magician and an investigator. 
So you are doing investigation and you are predicting the future. All right. So this brings us to so after understanding the various methodologies, this brings us to why Power BI. So there are various business analytics tools. Um, there is Tableau, there is R, there is Power BI, there is Sub, there is Python, which my very good friend will be teaching in February. But the question is, why am I choosing Power BI? Because if you look at this quadrant, this is the um, analysis on the best uh, data business analytic tools in the world currently and you realize for the past three years or two years Microsoft's Power BI has been the best is the leader this is from Gartner as of, as of January 2020 it's easy to use it's cheap and you understand I have a video on um, why Power BI I'll put it in the link try and watch it so as you understand the reason why you have to get Power BI. Even as a small business owner, you should have Power BI, do some small analytics. I believe everybody has to be a data analyst or a data scientist because we're always using data to make decisions. So that is where Microsoft Power BI is way up there and followed closely by Tableau and Salesforce and all the other ones are struggling. So that's why Power BI. 97% of Fortune 500 companies use the Power Platform. The Power Platform includes the Power BI, Power Apps, and some other things. So if 97% of the world's top 500 companies are using Power BI, I mean, <laughs> what else? What, what else should you be told? From Walmart to Kroger to BMW, H&M, Virgin Atlantic, Unilever, HSBC, Heineken, La Post, Max and Spencer, Ford, UPS, Pandora, Delta, Ecolab, Heathrow, Coca-Cola, Volvo, FedEx, and the likes are all using Power BI. So it is a very great tool to actually show you insights in your company. You know, hitherto, like I said earlier, companies used to make decisions based on judgment. And therefore, always executives always had challenges explaining to investors why a dozen decisions decision was made through gut feeling and now you can be able to get the data and mine it and show it to investors why we chose to invest here why we chose to do here and as a business there's always value for data any business today that actually values data has a premium over its counterpart that has um, does not use data the challenge is whether businesses are ready for the change of moving from gut feelings to data driven decision making so that is what executives today are struggling with is that an issue of whether they need to go where they are the current way they've been doing or change the way they make their decision so you may be a business a small business maybe you're doing bags and other um, accessories you are always saying okay me I know my business I know where to buy the things I know what moves yes it's true but the truth is you may not always be there to make that decision so the best thing is that you have a scientific way of making the decision so that anybody that comes to take that position tomorrow when you are not there to make that decision, they would know the methodology that you use and also be able to make a similar decision as if you were there. So that is where data analysis comes in. So in this particular course or these five videos that I'll be doing, this will be the main things that I'll be teaching with regards to Power BI, as Microsoft Power BI. We'll be connecting to data sources. We'll be changing data type. That's we'll be doing data transformation, mainly data, desktop modeling, and visualization. The visualization is my favorite topic because I see myself more as a data storyteller. Um, it entails like 20% of the work but it's like branding, it is what the people will see. So even though it entails 20% of the work, it is what people will see, so it's what will attract. It's more like beauty and character. The visualization side is the beauty that attracts people. They see a nice visual, it's like, wow, this um, thing is cool. Then people begin to now go into it. So without a nice visual, people will not even care about the modeling you did and the transformation. So I'll spend some time here, I'll spend some time in desktop modeling and data transformation. 
So our topic today is just to introduce you to Power BI. I've already spoken about the importance. Watch the other video I did on why Power BI. I'll put a link below. Then overview of Power BI. Microsoft has a brilliant vision of making data accessible to anybody anywhere in the world. And that is why they brought Power BI and its um, other tools that they brought to make our lives easy. They virtually are trying to democratize data analysis so that anybody at all can actually analyze data. Your Power BI helps you unlock insights on any data, um, turning data into a business advantage. The Power BI has the share and collaborate with Office 365. You can view it anywhere in the world on your tablet. It has a mobile version. I may go through that. It has a web version and it has the development version. So I'll take you through all the various parts of the Power BI. But watch that video that I talked about and you probably get more on why Power BI. So this is the end of my slides. This is the theory part. Now let's get to action of the Power BI itself. So first go to um, www.powerbi.com Once you type in powerbi.com You get this particular um, URL and this web page. What you do is that you look for the you see there's why power bi watch demo so probably we can all watch the demo together there are so many other demos that you can watch so it's like visualize and share data in the office on the go and there is a connect data model and visualize data so these are the videos I want you to watch so as you be convinced among yourself and what I want you to see is download Power BI desktop for free so you start for free you come here and you're able to download for free so you come here you download and then there will be a pop-up then you can download for free so there's also down, see download or language um, options. This one, I would always advise click on the see download or language options. It will give you the, the other one would give you the online version, but this one will give you the desktop version that would help you install on any machine. The only caveat here is that the iOS people may have some challenges. They've not actually done an iOS version. Sorry the Apple guys but you can download the online version so when you come here after selecting see download or language options you come here you select English and you download you have the details the systems requirement it takes a lot of uh, memory and RAM so that is it you start downloading then you would install it like any other software so let's go straight to the Power BI itself, the desktop version first. There's a web version which I will treat on day three after we've done some work. So as you would also be able to um, understand, because if we go to the web version and we've not done anything, it would be meaningless. You not see anything. So now I'm opening my Power BI. So you open the Power BI after installing, this is what you would see. So sometimes you would have to sign in. Um, I'm not signing. All right. So you can sign in if you want to, but I'm not signing for this particular tutorial. So this is Power BI for you. So welcome to Power BI if today is your first time of seeing the BI interface. So this is the interface. So I'll teach the interface today and probably do a quick assignment so as we can all go home at least today. You would have to tell a friend that you did one or two things. So this is the interface. This is the file. Just like it's similar to Microsoft um, Excel, right? File or any of the other tools. 
there is home, there is insert, there is modeling, there is view, there is help. Let me open it a little bit. And there are external tools. You may not have external tools like I do, but these are the various parts of. So this is the first part. I'll take you through everything in here. So in the home, you get get data. I told you that in the uh, some model, you realize that the first thing is obtain the data. So you need to first get the data in the home. You get data. This one is like. So when you click on get data, it shows Excel, Power BI data sets, Power BI data flows, SQL. All right. Analysis services, test, web. I think any data in the world that you can think of, you will find it in Power BI. There is LinkedIn data. Micro, um, there used to be even Facebook data that you can click, link it straight but there's Google Analytics so when you click on get data so this is all so this is the various data sources that you can any data source that you can imagine so this is Power BI data sets SQL enter data if you want to enter data manually this is where you go we'll talk about it in my next video the more recent data sources so which recent data sources did you go to transform data I'll talk about this in my next video new visuals test box you can bring in a text box just like what you have done in PowerPoint so I can type in here and then all right so here is my canvas like it has my working space this small space here yeah then there's more visual so for today I'll just be teaching the home page just so as we can do something quickly and then there is this tab called report there's this tab so the report page is where we are there's this tab called data later you understand when we bring in data so it's showing us here that in the fields they showed us that you haven't loaded any data yet get data then there's a model so this is the data model if you understand data tables I think I did a video on data table some time back and interviewed even a data um, base engineer. I'll actually add a link to it if you want to watch so as you understand what that is about. All right. So let's, okay, let me, okay, there's another pane here called filters. So it's used for filtering some things in this report page. There's the visualization. This is where we would be doing our visual storytelling. Various visuals are here. So there is the stack bar chart, stack column chart, clustered bar chart. A lot of visuals are here that you can play with. And there are fields. So when we bring our data in, they will come into these fields. So let me close them again. And let's go and get data. Interesting enough, kindly this used not to be there until the latest update so Microsoft has now made it easier for anybody who comes in if you don't even know what to do even if you don't know these tabs you can go straight here and actually play with a certain data set and you see that there's import data from Excel import data from SQL server and paste data into a blank table and there's try a data a sample data set and get data from another source so for the sake of let's use a sample data set that microsoft so this one everybody has once you download it you will get it so let's say try a sample data set so it's asking us whether we want to take a tutorial online you can actually go through this tutorial to help you step by step or you load the sample data so let's load the sample data and see what happens. It's establishing contact. So Microsoft is going to give us a data set that we are going to play with, at least for today. I want us to get something that we can work with today, so as at least you see something before that the first video ends. So this is a financial sample that we are going to play with. It's already embedded in your free your tri, uh, your BI. 
so let me probably go back again and show people who did not see it so we come to try a sample data set you click on it you click on sorry you click on load sample data so we we'll click on load sample data it then connects and then we select this is an excel sheet actually i know this data set a little bit because it's one of the data set microsoft used in training so you select the table you know in excel sheet there will be sheet one sheet two so this financial sheet is like one of the sheets in an excel sheet so you see financial sample dot xlsx meaning that from excel then once I select, I'll see a lot of the columns in the data set. There is segment, there is country, there is product, there is discount bound, band, there is unit sold, there is manufacturing price. So this is basically a company. So this is where the business understanding that I was talking about comes in. You need to understand what business is this and what problem are they trying to solve. So our data set is coming from a business that does manufacturing price or manufacturing price, sale price, gross sales. So they so definitely this is a manufacturing company. So after understanding the business, the next thing to do is to understand the data. So we are using the Chris DM methodology. So we have country, like I said, this company definitely sells for to governments. That's the segment that they deal with. The countries they serve are Canada, Germany, France. Mexico. The product is Carretera. Um, discount band, none. Like depending on the discounts that they gave to people, units sold, manufacturing price, sale price, gross sales, discount sales, and the date. You realize that in the next videos that date is one of the most important attributes of data that you would need as a data analyst because everybody in business especially the data analysis that are done are mainly time series analysis so whether trends which months do we sell what month number month name and month year just because this is our first video there is load there is transform there is cancel never get data and click on load straight always transform your data what did i say never get data and load it straight but transform data even if you don't do anything there but for the sake of this particular video being your first i'm going to load it sorry for showing you a very bad part i don't want to get you your mind so much on a lot of things but when i click on transform it will open a different um page that i'm not taught yet and we have to go from knowns to unknowns so let me just load first and let's see what happens so i'm loading the data into the bi so So the data is loading into the BI. So if you remember, all the fields that we had in the data set are now showing in the various fields here. So sales, cost of goods sold, country, date, discount band, discount, gross sales. So all the things that we saw in the data is showing here. Interesting in love the data sets that are numerical in nature or the data type is a number is actually showing a sigma which means it's a sum it's a sum in the data automatically so there's discount there's gross sales there's manufacturing um, price they are all being summed here there's sale price there's unit sold okay so these are our fields and these are our visualization and if you remember I told you this is our report pane this first one is the report pane this is the data first one went to data because there was no data nothing showed but now you can view the data 
here in the data plane. So all our data has 700 rows. And the model, we have only one table. So you see only one table here. Later, uh, we might do data sets that have multiple tables and you understand it. If there are any questions, you can actually type it and I'll answer it in my next video. Maybe the last, the third class, I may do a live series so as I can take some of your questions and help you. All right. So that's data and that's the model. So we'll be working mainly in the report pane. The reason why I say Power BI is easy is just a drag and drop. So you see that it's written here, build visuals with your data. Once I brought in a data set, it's asking me to build my visuals with the data. Like I told you, the data set is a manufacturing company that sells to government and in different countries. So what will be our first analysis? So there are various visualizations. These are the visuals are like the storytellers. They are the ones that are going to tell the story to the end user. So first, I'll pick the first visual here, the stack bar chart. Once I pick a visual, there would be a pop-up here. So let me delete it first. Before that, there was fields here and there is what format here. So once I pick the visual, beneath the visualization pane, you see fields, you see format, and you see analytics. Because this visual has three different things. One is the analytics. All right, so this is a stacked bar chart. I'll do a whole video on the visualizations. Like I said, it's one of my most fascinating parts of data analysis. That's the storytelling part. So now let's say we want to find out the sale per each. So in our axis, we'll put in the country. So you drag and drop, it's drag and drop. Then I'll put sales in the values. So this is like sales by country. So United States, there's Canada, there's France, there's Germany, there's Mexico. This is the stacked bar chart. Let's go to probably another visual. This time I want to probably see sales as my values, but I want to see by segment. Okay. So this is government had the most sales, followed by small business, followed by enterprise, followed by mid market and channel partners. So these are the various segments that is in our data set. Alright. Let me also bring another maybe the tree map that's third on the row so so you see within a few minutes we started building more of a dashboard kind of all right so let's bring in sales by country again but this time we are using a tree map this is a tree map is like third on the on the third row the last bottom so there's a tree map. It shows the same data set in a different way. So we are telling the story in different ways. Then let's do maybe a trend line. Oh, I change. So let's look at this. This is a line chart. So I'll put line chart here. Very long. And let's do put in the date. Let's change this from is to proper date you right click on the axis the drop down here and then you choose date instead of the date hierarchy okay so the next thing I'll put in here is the sales so I'm getting my sales per each date that I have in there so this is for day one at least we've built something. It's just introductory. We'll go deeper in the next and subsequent. Let me bring maybe a test box and write something. Okay. Sales of a or a jar coffee sales report. So I brought in a text box. Let me change the font size to 32. 
but we have a jack of e sales report let me probably bring one visual which is called the card I'll put it here and probably put in the total sales so there's our total sales let's click any part of the report maybe so that is the I'm clicking US so when I click on USA you see it filters the entire report to US so the actual sales used to be 118 when I click on US US is 25 it filters here to US it filters here to just US and even the line graph is in US so it's an interactive dashboard like let me click here to you see that it also affects everything there let me click maybe government in the segment would also filter everywhere in there so that's what we call interactive dashboard because it interacts with all the visuals in the data so we want to know just the government sales is 52.5 million and we get month on month on the government so this is our day one video hopefully you'll be able to do this if you have any challenges let me know and I'll quickly solve it in the next video you can write your comments so as I will correct it in my next video this is the first of five thank you for staying true and hopefully in our next class we'll go through the transformations and some other fanciful stuff that we can hey before we go let's do something interest let me change so in the format you can change the colors you can change it's like formatting you can bring a background you can bring a backdrop you can you can do a lot of things we'll go through that also but now let me just bring borders just to make my dashboard looks a little neater border and a border all right so there we have it the the jack of sales report we built our first dashboard i'll make the file available just in case you missed anything so thank you very much the name is Ebenezer Safwedu I'm a business strategy consultant and a data specialist alright see you in the next class